I'm David Soper. Today I'll be going through an overview of the Cisco UCS Manager vSphere Client Remote Plugin, also known as the vCenter Plugin. There are several links provided in the overview on installation usage and where to get software downloads. And I'll start with a look at that software download and certificate configuration step in installation. Uh, from software.cisco.com, there are two downloads required. The first is a certificate chain, which we'll import into vCenter and then also the actual OVA download for deployment. Once I've downloaded that certificate chain, I'll go into my vSphere client and I'll go to administration and certificate management and I'll add a certificate. So I'll get that downloaded PIM file, click the certificate push to vCenter hosts and click add to add that certificate. Uh, this will allow the plugin to operate properly. Next up, I'll take a look at the OVA deployment and VM configuration. So again, in the vSphere client, I'll go out into my inventory and I'll deploy an OVF template. I'll select that OVA that I've downloaded from software.cisco.com. I'll give it a virtual machine name, <clears throat> go through and do the other needed configuration. Select storage. Um, in customizing the template, uh, there are some missing fields here, so I'll fill in what is available for my DNS server, NTP server. I'll set a password. This is the admin password that the plugin will use. And then I'll notice on properties that I'm actually missing a few settings for IP address, net mask, and gateway. So looking back at the release notes, I see that there is an issue in this current version with vSphere client version 801 and I will need to go back in after OVA deployment and do some manual configuration. So back in vCenter, once I've deployed this OVA, I need to go into vApp options, uh, look at the properties, and I'll need to select those missing properties like net mask and set a value. Same for IP address and my gateway. And again, details on this workaround are provided in the release notes, but again, I'm in the configuration of this VM and a few other options I need to set. At this point, I'm ready to power on the VM and then I'll finish out the configuration. With the VM configured and powered on, I'm now ready to take a look at the rest of the plugin setup and domain registration of UCS Manager domains. So now I can go log in to the plugins, the plugin VM's uh, host name or IP address, and I'll use that admin password that I configured during VM deployment. And I should have an option now to register my vCenter servers. Uh, generally, I want Proactive HA enabled, that's the default. Again, a host name or IP this time of your vCenter server, along with the vCenter username and password. And then hopefully after a little bit, you'll see, uh, after clicking registration, you'll see the uh, status uh, plugin green and proactive HA status enabled. And at this point, we're ready to go back into vSphere. Back in vSphere, I uh, see so a notice at the top that the UCS Manager plugin has been successfully deployed. Refresh the browser to enable. After I click refresh, should now see that UCS Manager plugin show up in the plugins menu. Select that. So this again is my remote plugin VM. Um, I can go in at this point and I can register UCS domains. So I'll fill in UCS Manager domains for monitoring and configuration from within vSphere. For that domain, I'll use my UCS Manager hostname or IP, again, username and password. I'll set as visible to all users within vSphere and click OK. And I get a message that I successfully registered that UCS manager. Now we'll take a look at monitoring and configuration of UCS manager through the client. So with that registered domain, if I double click on that domain, vSphere will pull it up 
And I can see some summary information, um, including what I have as ESXi managed servers, unmanaged servers. If I go click configure, there's a variety of options here for firmware management, uh, deriving profiles from templates within the profiles menu. I can take a look at these profiles. And if I select one of these, there are actions I can perform, such as managing the host firmware packs. In the interest of time, I won't go through a lot here, but there's a lot more information in the usage guide on all the different options you have for monitoring and configuring UCS domains from the remote plugin. This item I'll look at is configuring proactive HA. So in my vSphere inventory, I'll select a cluster where I want to enable proactive HA. And from that clusters configure menu, um, I see here that proactive HA is not available in the upper part of the screen. And I need to enable DRS on this cluster. So I can go edit DRS settings. You can use whatever your appropriate defaults are. And once I've done that, I go back to vSphere availability. And I see that Proactive HA is now turned on. A little further down, I see that there's no response uh, for Proactive HA because there's no provider enabled on the cluster. So if I edit my Proactive HA settings, then you can use your appropriate defaults. If I click providers here, I should see my UCS manager provider. If I select that, I can see my failure conditions and I can control from within vCenter which faults are blocked or unblocked to drive proactive HA. And then I will need to check that status in the middle to actually enable this provider for proactive HA. And once I've done that, if I click OK, I should see proactive HA go to automated and enabled on this cluster. A lot more information, uh, again, in the usage guide on how you can customize the provider from the remote plugin to add custom faults to remove faults and how to interact with Proactive HA and disable, enable as needed. Um, there's also a link again in this video out to the community.cisco.com page where I encourage any questions that you have on that. Uh, but for now, there's a quick overview of how to just turn on Proactive HA and get it running on the cluster. Thank you for your time.